Today we're following along with the wood grain meta, but we're gonna keep the build at a reasonable budget of just under $800. It's great to see that even the more budget focused case brands are gravitating towards these wood grain panels. So today we're gonna utilize this one and fill it up with as much performance as possible for our budget. After I build it, I'll talk about all the parts inside of here if you wanna copy it for yourself. And then I'll take it home with me for a few days to give it a full daily drive and review and run some benchmarks. Jumping straight into the parts list, we're gonna use the king of mid range value, the Ryzen 5 7500F. There's a lot of things I like about this CPU, which you can see over here, but honestly, it all comes down to jumping onto the upgradable AM5 platform at a really cheap price. That will set this build up nicely for a future upgrading project. Same thing with the motherboard, as this is the Gigabyte B650 Aorus Elite AX, and I actually sniped this used on Amazon resale, which of course is always risky. I did actually pay the price for it this time, but we'll talk about that in just a bit. For cooling the 7500F, we're going with probably my favorite non a RGB budget option, which is the ID Cooling Frozen A410. Such a clean aesthetic that actually performs really well. For the RAM, we have the Crucial DDR5 Pro All Black Kit, which is 32 gigabytes clocked at 6,000 megahertz. I already had this kit in the studio, but feel free to use any all black kit for around 85 bucks. What I also had in the studio was from today's video sponsor, Corsair, and this is their new Custom Lab series of peripherals, which my wife has definitely been enjoying. I actually asked her which one of these beautiful designs she wanted for her office set up here at the ZTT HQ, and she went with this insane dreamscape setup, which looks so good. With Corsair's custom lab, you're able to completely customize their already high-end peripherals to take their aesthetic game to an entirely new level. They also just launched their new artist series collection, which is a limited time drop, and these look incredible as well. On their website, you can customize my already personal favorite mouse of the last year, which is the M75 Wireless, along with their K65 Plus keyboard and the MM300 mouse pad, along with the dreamscape that we got, there's a ton of other themes to pick from, and you can check them out for yourself by visiting that first link down in the description. But now let's continue talking about today's build. Next up is the SSD, and I'm using the Sabrent Rocket Q4 again because this is a solid mid-ranged NVMe drive, which has been usually going on sale for around $55. Powering everything is the MSI Mag A650BM, which I feel like I talk about in every video. Now, one thing I've never talked about though is this case, and honestly, this was part of the main inspiration for this build. I've been talking about the Okinos brand for a few weeks now, and it seems like everyone is picking up on that trend. But this Cypress 7 wood grain model isn't one that I've seen anybody use, and unfortunately, it's already out of stock at the time of making this video. You can, of course, use literally any ATX size case if you're trying to copy this at home, but I'm definitely digging this Cypress 7 for whenever it does come back into stock. It comes pre-installed with four all-black PWM fans, and although this wood is as fake as it gets, it still gives off that nice cigar-smoking, whiskey-drinking vibe, so I'm all about it. Because of this huge oak trend lately, I also tried out their 16 gauge black cable extensions and nothing really to report about these. They work great and I didn't have any issues. And finally, the last part we have is of course the graphics card and we're gonna go with a used MSI RTX 3070 that I picked up for $250 on eBay. Honestly, I've been talking about the used 3070 meta for a few weeks now on YouTube shorts and TikTok, so I just wanted to bring it to life and show you what this previous gen GPU is still capable of. The 7500F from AliExpress and a used RTX 3070 is one of my favorite combinations, and you'll see why soon in the benchmarking section. Now, I did build this PC over on my Twitch live stream, where I'm literally always running a gaming PC giveaway, by the way, and there's two main events that stuck out to me. The first one is that with this motherboard, like I was mentioning earlier, unfortunately, I didn't discover that it had a single bent pin until I went to install the CPU. I definitely should have checked on this ahead of time, as you should do, but if you ever find yourself in this situation, don't panic, because it may still be okay. I personally don't recommend trying to get in there and re-bend the pins on the AM5 socket because anyone who's actually seen these in real life knows that they are super tiny. They're way more difficult than previous pins have been over the last few years. However, if you look at the AM5 socket chart, all of these black boxes represent a grounding pin, and if one of these get bent, there's a chance that the CPU will still work. The main thing to worry about is to verify that the pin isn't bending so far that it's making contact with another pin because that would potentially cause a short and probably jack everything up. So because of this, during the live stream, everyone convinced me to just keep on building so that's exactly what I did. Once the PC made its way back to the studio, we put this through an excruciating stress testing run and we benchmarked 20 games, which we'll get into in just a bit. And this resulted in absolutely zero issues. I'm definitely considering myself lucky with this one. But even if I wasn't lucky, one of the main benefits of buying from Amazon resale is that you still have the simple Amazon return process. If it didn't work, I would have just returned it, waited two more days for a replacement to ship out, and then I would be good to go. Amazon resale is one of the least risky ways of buying used components in my opinion 
opinion. So that's why I do it often, and especially with motherboards, because they often have the really good deals. Usually there's no issue like we had today though. The second thing worth mentioning about the building process is that this case does actually have some options for cable routing and managing, but the problem is definitely the lack of depth with the rear side panel. This is one of those cases where you absolutely cannot afford to have a cable bulge in the back there, or otherwise that panel isn't gonna close. I almost called an audible to remove the cable extensions, but I proceeded and I got it all in there. If you are gonna use this case with a bunch of ARGB products and AIO or other accessories, I definitely be careful and make sure you bring a lot of zip ties. What's cool about this though, is that Okinos actually emailed me right after the stream and said that they were watching it and they were taking my feedback on this exact issue seriously. I'm not sure if that's the reason why it's out of stock right now, but maybe there's a chance that they address this soon and get a version two cranked out. Very cool of them to keep tabs on the community using their cases though, I really respect that. But yeah, overall, here's what the final parts list is looking like. And as you can see, if you're willing to gamble on a used motherboard and GPU and buy a CPU from AliExpress, you can easily keep this under 800 bucks. If you'd rather buy everything all new or maybe only buy a used graphics card from somewhere like Jawa, you'd probably be closer to the $850 mark, which honestly would still probably be really solid. So just like the new normal, I took this PC home with me to daily drive it for a few days and I'm using the same peripheral weapon layout that I did last time, including the Zero Mouse V35. I've created a ton of content about how fun using this mouse has been and my next upgrade will definitely be the mouse pad because I feel like this $15 pad from Amazon isn't doing the Zero Mouse justice. I did make sure to change the wallpaper on the PC though to match the wood grain cigar smoke and vibe that this PC is given off. So first up, I of course jumped into X Defiant and I put the settings at 1440p. I actually turned on Nvidia Reflex this time with boost and I chose the high preset, but the only change was turning off VSync. I first jumped in there with a shotgun for literally my very first time in this game. And you can even see my first kill notification with a shotty. To my surprise, I was actually having a lot of fun running around the corners and one shotting people without barely having to aim. I almost never use shotguns in FPS games, but I'm kind of digging it depending on the map. The game was running buttery smooth at around 140 to 150 FPS. Usually the CPU gets up there in utilization with this title, but the 7500F wasn't breaking a sweat, especially as we're playing in 1440p and the utilization was only around 50%. The RTX 3070 was certainly working though up around 90 to 95%, but that's what we're looking for. To end off the testing, I whipped out the sniper rifle just for like half a match. And just like the shoddy, this isn't something that I normally do. I did manage to string together some pretty solid multi-kills and I'm not gonna lie, this smooth of a gaming experience with the 26 gram zero mouse was feeling really nice. I might have to do this more often. Next up, I fired up Killing Floor 2, which isn't a title that I've talked about in literally years, but I put the settings at 1440p ultra, but keep in mind, you do need to turn on this variable frame rate setting to get an unlocked FPS. Now, I'm by no means saying that this is a graphically demanding game or anything, but every now and then I like to hop in here because it's just one of those games where you just start killing things within like 20 seconds of booting the game up. The heavy rock music while you're out there just slaying zombies is definitely a vibe. I've always loved these jump in and jump out style of games where you can get a full session playing in just like 20 minutes. And despite being an older title, this was actually pushing the 3070 all the way the entire time. The GPU stayed nice and cool in the mid 60s, which you love to see. And I was averaging around that 200 FPS mark the entire time. If you have any other game recommendations like this, where you just jump in and start playing, let me know down in the comment section. And finally, the last game that I tested is F124. And we're going to continue my new season, which we started last week, where I'm trying to turn around the kick team. I put the settings at 1440p and used TAA for anti-aliasing and also the high preset. This week's race was at Jeddah for the Saudi Arabia Grand Prix. And during the qualifying, I was immediately notified that I cranked up the difficulty a bit too high. Qualified down at 19th position, only beating out Logan Sargent. Not a great start. I mean, the PC at least ran great because I was up there around 140 to 150 FPS the entire time. I definitely appreciate the higher frame rate with this style of fast twitchy racing and the PC felt really responsive. I don't remember a single frame rate drop during the entire race weekend. I did get a solid start to the actual race though as I jumped up to 15th position and I did do a decent job of staying up there but over time I could just feel that I was holding back the pack behind me and the kick car just didn't have the pace to stay here nope. for long. I slipped down to P18 which you don't love to see. Definitely going to decrease that difficulty just a little bit for next time. But yeah here's the rest of the games that we tested and we made the decision to test everything in 1440p like I just did at home. The 3070 is one of those borderline 1080p ultra or 1440p style of cards, but I wanted to showcase what this system is truly capable of. For less than 800 bucks, we're able to play literally any game in 1440p with some respectable settings. And again, the value is mostly coming from saving all that money from the AliExpress CPU and the used motherboard and graphics card. I'm definitely really happy with how this project turned out though. It was fun to take this home and play around with it for a few days in 1440p, and it's rocking an aesthetic vibe that's definitely competing for the new meta right now. If you're not digging this 
wood grain though, then check out the video that's on the screen now for a similarly priced build with a much different aesthetic.